calling this presentation working the gap between theory and practice in learning and teaching. One of the things that initially drew me to the SIT certificate course and SIT in general was just the way the course focuses on learning at the beginning, which I think is was is really unique and just fantastic. And you know, this whole idea about what helps people learn. But I've also found myself kind of looking back and forth between the theory and practice. So I call it working the gap. So one of the things in the original SIT course was an activity called reflection on learning. So the idea was uh, just as a review, probably many of you know this, you have the participants think about a skill or learning experience, and then you ask them to think about what helped or hindered their learning. And then they focus on like their self, uh, their peer, like what did they do that helped or hindered their learning? What did their peer do that helped or hindered their learning? The teacher, environment, materials. And then like in the reflection sessions, you get them talking in pairs, uh, about their experiences. And then in the reflection sessions, they, you know, they, they go, they think individually, they discuss it in pairs. Um, and then we often elicit from the participants and create posters. This is a poster, I believe, Jen White, this is a poster <laughs> you wrote. Um, I recognize your handwriting uh, when we were in Berkeley. And, um, you know, you can see there are factors that affect learning there, repetition or impatience or things that could hinder learning. And one of the things that comes out is that something that might help one person learn might hinder another person's learning, which is interesting. And in this way, we sort of co-construct theories about learning. And uh, I think it could be a very powerful experience and really sets the foundation for the course. The course itself, uh, as, as you all know, is designed around experiential learning. So you start with the concrete experience. In this case, like people start with their own concrete experiences of learning. They do reflective observation, like thinking about their describing it and then abstract conceptualization and active experimentation. Uh, in Berkeley, uh, we modified that a little bit and we changed it to the DIGPA framework. Um, some of you might have used this. So they have their concrete experience, then they describe it what happened, they interpret it, like what helped or hindered them in that experience. And they generalize then, like this is part of the abstract conceptualization, like in general, what helps or hinders people le people's learning and then plan action. So it was just a little bit of our, our way of making the words a little bit less technical sounding. So the idea is developing these theories and beliefs about what helped, uh, what helps people learn and I think the theories fall into, for us, the generalization category in the DIGPA framework or in that abstract conceptualization. Things like saying like, oh, repetition can help people learn, like that, that kind of insight into learning. I've also been super interested in what's called the science of learning. And this is over a hundred years of research um, that's been done all over the world, mostly it is kind of languished in academic journals. But more recently, uh, it became published for a general audience uh, in like the last 10 years, especially 10, 15 years. And some of the recent publications that have come up are, uh, and this is not for ESL, this is for teaching and learning in general. James Lang wrote a really great book for uh, higher ed called Small Teaching, fantastic book. There's this book called, How, and I have a bibliography for all of these things for you, um, How Learning Happens. And this is uh, like 30 studies. This is a group out of, I believe, the Netherlands. Uh, fantastic uh, summaries of, of uh, research and learning. The ABCs of How We Learn is a group out of Stanford, Dan, Daniel Schwartz. Also very accessible, really makes a lot of the theory that, like I said, had been just sort of gathering dust in academic journals brings it out for a popular audience. How Learning Works is one of the first ones that came out. This is a team out of Carnegie Mellon from a learning teaching center there. And then Dan Willingham is a, a very popular author. He's a cognitive scientist. He wrote this book, Why Don't Students Like School? This is one of the first books to really bring the science of learning to a popular audience. I think it was in 2011, maybe. Anyway, I've been reading all these books as they've been coming out. And, uh, you know, I've been asking myself, well, how can we integrate this research into an experiential course? So there's all this research out there. How can we work this gap? 
how can we make this research meaningful to our participants? And uh, how can we avoid having our participants reinvent the wheel each time? <clears throat> or that that feeling of like, maybe you have a little bit less savvy group and they're leaving out a lot of stuff that you know that you want in there. So how do you get it in there? <laughs> and so um, I developed a document called The Principles of Learning with my team, with Jen and uh, Jen White, who's here, and Jeff Puccini. And I've been using it on my trainings. And basically it's a summary with 16 statements that sort of go through and try to summarize the research. It's organized into sections and there talk about general factors that affect learning, things that help people encounter and clarify. So those of you who are familiar with the ECRA framework, we organized it that way. Things that help people remember or internalize or improve at something. And then the social emotional dimensions also is the final thing. And so you can, this is, I'll, I'll give you a link to this in just a minute, but this is sort of what it looks like. You can see like there's the general helping students uh, encounter and clarify. And then there's, there's a second page too. And there's a link, which I'll share with you in just a moment. So the idea is that you want, that what we try to do is modify the constructivist approach. So it's reflection informed by research. And the idea here is that participants, so go back to that reflection on learning. Participants discuss their concrete experiences, right? And then they think about what helped or hindered their learning. Okay, that's individual. And they discuss, they discuss it with their partner. Okay, so there's that, that, that part stays the same. Then the part that's a little different is we have them read the principles of learning. So we give them the principles of learning document and we have them go through and read it. And we find, have them find principles that connect to their experiences. So they would just like circle or put a star next to two or three that, that connect to their experience. And then they share those with a partner and with the group. So in this way, it's like, again, sort of informed reflection, reformed by, uh, informed by research. Let me give you an example. So I often talk about learning to play the guitar. I'm not good at guitar. I had a little dabble with it, but I share this experience. Um, I had a lesson. In the lesson, uh, there was the song Mad World, which is a song that I really liked uh, when I was younger. And the teacher was really cool. The teacher created a simplified version of that song. And this really helped me. There were only four chords in the song. And I really liked this song, Mad World. So I, I just loved it. And I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. And this, this was one thing that really helped me learn guitar was having this moment. I'd like you to take a minute now. Now, normally what I would do is if we had more time is I'd have you think about your experience learning and then try to connect it to the principles of learning. But since we only have a few minutes here, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna give you the principles of learning in the chat right now. Take a look at that, open that document up. And uh, please give me a thumbs up if that opens for you. Is that working? Thank you, thank you. So just skim through the, the principles of learning, especially like the first like 10. And uh, I'd like you to just think for a moment about which principles do you think might apply to my experience? Again, normally we would have you think about it, talk to you about your experience, but Based on what I said about this guitar lesson, what principles can you see applied there? I'll just give you a minute to think about that. This is just to give you a feel for the kind of experience that we do on the course. So the literally the Literary Assistance Center, which I think is you, Will, said three appropriate level of challenge. Uh -huh. Yep, Justin, one, uh -huh. actively playing the guitar. Thank you, Holly. Smaller chunks, Barack, thank you. Yep. And 15, Holly mentions I was interested, yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you, Sally, reducing the cognitive load. Okay, so uh, you guys get a sense of it. Um, the one that I did 
for myself was I connected it to principle three. It could be connected to any of those. And I think all of all of everything you said there is valid. But uh, I explained to them here, this is the principle again. And sometimes we use a little graphic, something like this with skill level and challenge, and then that sweet spot. And this is like a super important principle of learning that students can, that participants can benefit from thinking about, uh, but they might not have come up with on their own, but then they can relate it to their own experience. So the idea is that, you know, they, they look at the, they think about their own experience. They think about the principles of learning after they've thought about, you know, their own reflection. And I might model it like this, learning guitar, number three, level of challenge, like that. And this is a way for them to connect and bridge that gap between theory and experience. So in summary, I think we, we, you know, we continue to engage our participants with experiences. We provide opportunities to reflect and have them think on their own, but then we link to the principles of learning so that there's a kind of enrichment there so that they can they can also create or modify their own ideas sometimes people come up with things that are not on the principles of learning and so it's a living document more research continues to come out and the idea is that research and personal ideation are not mutually exclusive so i will stop there thank you very much and uh, as promised i'd like to give you just a minute to get ready while matt is uh setting himself up so yeah if you could just jot down any any key key takeaways for you how would you summarize this to yourself or to a friend um and um which ideas are most useful for you what do you want to try what do you want to think about and uh, again thank you very much <laughs>